Today we're going to go over how to make a floating window, how to sort of save the state of that floating window, and then how could we do that actually with like a terminal? So we could with one key press open and close a terminal and save the state of the last thing that we were doing. And even if we were running something that had like a watching job for tests or something that it could kill, keep going on in the background for that. Let's just go ahead and get to it. So the way that I would do this is I'm thinking I want this sort of to set up a key map that's going to be available every time I open up NeoVim. So what, to do that, I would do something like I would create a new folder plugin in your home like config directory. If you have a plugin folder, every file inside of here automatically gets sourced at the beginning of every NeoVim uh, like startup. Okay, so we can make something we'll call it Fla Terminal for floating terminal. Pretty good name if I do say so myself. And here's where I'm going to let you in on a pretty, pretty juicy secret um, for doing something like opening up a floating window. We got this bad boy right here. How to create a floating window in NeoVim. I want it to be to optionally uh, take the width and height in a table. I want it to default to 80% of the current screen. I want it to be centered. Boom. Okay, it's okay to just ask ChatGPT to do this. There's like, this is the same thing as like I, everybody's written a thousand times, okay? So then you could just copy paste this into your config and keep it forever. That's great. So we'll copy this in. We'll make a few changes uh, as we go, obviously, because obviously it's not going to write it perfectly the way we want. But this is pretty good. And the way that we can test this right now is we can actually just call and we can print buff and win right here. And we can execute this file and see what happens. Hey, hello. Awesome. Look at that. Look at that. We've got this going. Now, I actually don't like this uh, very much because I want it to also say border equals rounded. Now, how would I know to even look for that? Well, good for you asking. Now you could say, I want to open up NVIM open win. I see that this is the function that's getting called here, right, in the ChatGPT thing. And then I know now I just read the NeoVim helps like TJ's been telling me over and over and over. And if I want a border, I just search border and i like this little rounded one for me i'm a, I'm a fan okay i'm a fan we could try some of the other ones we could try solid we could try shadow right we want to try shadow once we'll, we'll try both here you go there's rounded okay what about shadow no i'm not a fan as much i i think i like i think i like rounded better okay so now we leave it at rounded this is the one that i think looks nice okay so now we've got a floating window and we can put stuff inside of it um, the thing I don't want to do is I actually want to return it like this buff equals buff and win equals win like this as a table. And so what we need to do is we need to keep some state between executions of opening this window, right? So we'll create a state like this and we'll just say something like floating and we'll go uh, buff is negative one and win is negative one. So those are like, those are invalid windows. Okay. So what are we going to do? We're going to say, uh, state dot floating is this, and then we'll do uh, print state vim dot inspect state dot floating. Okay, so this will tell us after we execute this. Hey, look, we have buffer one hundred six and window one hundred eight six. Great, that's awesome. And now we can close those. So the next step, I'm thinking, how can we make this toggle? Okay, so we need to create, give ourselves a command or some key map or something to execute this. Let's start with a command. All right, so let's do something like uh, vim api nvim crea uh, create user command. Yep, and let's call it flow terminal, flow terminal like this. And it's going to call a function. So we'll put this inside here. And then it takes some optional extra arguments. So when we execute this file now, you'll see we have flow terminal. We made a command. We run this, it prints that, it opens it. Awesome, sweet. We don't wanna do this anymore. So what do we wanna do? In my mind, Flow Terminal should toggle on and off and it should, uh, that's that's what it should do every time we call it. So we can say something like this. If uh, n if not vim.api nvim uh, win is valid and we can go state.floating.win, then we're gonna make a new floating window else We'll go vim uh, api nvim win hide uh, state dot floating dot win. Okay, so we're gonna hide it if it's valid, and if it's not valid, we'll create a new one. So we execute this file again. We go flow terminal, and now we run flow terminal again. Boom! 
it's hidden. And if we check this and we go, hello world, we close it, we open it. Oh no, we're not reusing our buffer. Of course we're not. We need to tell it how to do that. So let's tell it how to do that. Let's pass into here, buff is state.floating.buff, right? So we're gonna pass the previous buffer that we had before. Let's look where we create buff. Let's say that this is nil to start. And now we can do if vim.apienvim buff is valid, right? Buffer is the just the text that's in memory, right? Buff is valid, ops.buff, then buff is ops.buff. Else, we'll do buff is this. We'll create a new buffer, okay? We'll create a new buffer for this. So we re-execute this. Now let's try this again. Fla terminal, hello world. Fla terminal, fla terminal. We kept our same buffer. Okay, but that's almost it, but not quite because we want it to be a terminal, right? We want it to be a terminal. So how can we do that? Great question. When we make a terminal, we actually set the buff type for the terminal. Oh, and that reminds me, let's just quick, I'm gonna give you guys a quick key map that I quite like, which is that I like making um, a vim key map set. Let's go terminal mode. I like pressing escape, escape is the same thing as this backslash cn that we talked about to escape from terminal mode so if we uh if we execute this and now i open up terminal if i press escape escape i go back to normal mode so it's kind of like a quick double tap for escape that's really easy because it's on my thumb for me may, might not be easy for you you could pick a different key map so anyways inside of here we can echo the buff type and it says terminal in lua land that's vim bo buff type and we can print that and it says terminal so this is how we can tell if the current buffer is a terminal or not and so let's go after we show the window let's go this if not uh if vim.bo and then let's go state.floating.buff.buff type not equal to terminal then vim command term end okay so this will call term inside of here or terminal if this makes it easier to figure out what i'm doing call terminal inside of that buffer because we've entered inside of it so we re-execute this we can go fla terminal we can go echo hello right like this now if i go fla terminal and i do it again we've got the same floating one and if we kill this right by like pressing Control d to kill that we're gonna get a new terminal next time we go up and this is pretty tool cool cool too because if we went to like um i'm working on something here in like uh you know so, something where i'm running a build script that's going over and over maybe yeah this is actually dune build dash w so this is like i could actually go here and i could go fla terminal and i open this i open it back again and it would still be running that build script so i could check like if the tests passed or failed since the last time i saved or whatever i wanted to do and then if we wanted to kill it we just kill the terminal and then it's done the only thing left for us to do is i would probably take this function here um and i would yank it and i would say toggle terminal like this and i would say local toggle terminal is this function here and i would also say vim dot key map dot set and we could do something like um oh, we could also set this in terminal mode now that i think about it like this and we could say something like space um i don't know tt or something like that right that's probably not that often to get typed tt in a row i don't know maybe it will be i'm not sure but you could figure out your own mapping uh and you just call it on toggle terminal like this and so if we execute this file again and we go space tt it's going to open this we press space tt it's going to close it space tt open space tt close Boom. You could imagine making a bunch of different versions of this. You could have like five of them and move them on one, two, three, four, five, or like do whatever. But I mean, this is everything that you need to open and close the floating terminal. No problem at all. Easy peasy. Change it however you like. And it's only 50 ish lines of code. We could make it less, but I kind of like wanted to comment some of it and all this good stuff. So anyways, there you go. It's, it's that easy. It's, it's really that easy. And since it's so easy and since it's so cool, I've got a little something extra for you guys for the sponsor today. <clears throat> and it's something that's pretty close to my heart. Something pretty close to my heart here. So let me just give you a little read from, uh, from what I've got going on. I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, Thoughtless Labs, who's here to raise awareness about a truly important cause. 
it's the holiday season. And as we spend time with friends and family, and many take a well-deserved break from social media, those breaks are healthy. They are healthy. But, but there are a few people who depend on them. And I'm depending you not taking too long of one. And that's the humble reply guy. Okay. Adopt a reply guy is a mission from Thoughtless Labs that you pick one reply guy in your mentions and you give them a like. You might even throw them a reply. If they drop a real banger, consider giving them a follow or at least a based and or cooked or a GM. You, you can do it, right? You can be the change in the world that you want to see. And so I just wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. This is not Photoshopped, obviously. This is a real photo of us together. I'm not Photoshopped from my thing from Japan. Anyways, thanks to Thoughtless Labs <laughs> for today's sponsor and adopter reply guy. See you tomorrow. <laughs>